Good evening and Merry Christmas. Welcome to Woodlawn United Church and our Christmas Eve service. I have just a couple of notes about our service. When we come to the distribution of the elements during communion later on, the first thing to remember is everybody is welcome to this table regardless of your religious tradition or background. I'll say that again. Everyone is welcome to this table regardless of your religious tradition or background. The bread we use is gluten-free and the wine is non-alcoholic grape juice. Please feel welcome to join in the celebration of Holy Communion. Following the opening part of our service, the remainder of the service, we will not be announcing the readings or the hymns. Please follow along in your order of service, and the hymns are projected here in the front. Our opening hymn is hymn number one, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Please be seated.
We acknowledge this evening that we worship, live, move, and have our being on the traditional territories of the Mi'kmaq people, and we work to find ways to seek out paths of reconciliation with the First Nations people of our land. Let us pray. We welcome you on this night, Jesus Christ, born amongst us once again as a child. The mystery of your birth contains within the mystery of the ages and the mystery of God's everlasting love. You do not come among us as one so filled with power that we cannot resist you. Rather, you come to us in gentleness, in the flesh, in a child, in weakness, and even dependence. You do not overwhelm us, but invite our love with your humble cries as we are drawn once again to the stable in Bethlehem, we are astonished along with the shepherds that you have called us out with the heavenly chorus of angels to tell us that we are welcome, we are chosen, and we are yours. Tonight we give thanks for these graces and wonders. We also remember in our prayers this evening everyone for whom this is a difficult season. We pray for everyone missing home, missing loved ones, missing the companionship they need. We pray for everyone who is ill or grieving or lost or afraid. We pray for your holy land where Bethlehem still struggles to find peace. And we joyfully sing out the message of peace and promise, and we will not forget those who suffer in Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, Ukraine, Russia, Myanmar, Sudan, and all places and all peoples for whom peace is elusive. Grant to us this night, gracious God, an abiding sense of your presence Bolster our confidence in you as you send us forth to be messengers of your love. Strengthen our resolve to be agents of your grace. Calm our spirits and make us your own once again. For you call us beloved and we seek to follow you with courage and with hope. We pray this boldly in the name of the Christ child. Amen. Our Savior's birth is celebrated with bold faith. 
May our hearts be willing. Like Mary, who showed humble surrender, may our hearts be willing. Like Joseph, who exhibited unconditional trust, may our hearts be willing. Like the shepherds, who displayed awestruck wonder, may our hearts be willing. Like the angels, who sang glorious praise, may our hearts be willing. For all who are willing to receive the gift of the Savior born in Bethlehem, grant that we might have. Tonight we light all the candles. The first candle is the hope shining for those worn thin by times of waiting. The second candle is hope shining for those worn down with wearied souls. The third candle captures the hopeful expectation of those eagerly watching for Christ's glory in our day. The fourth candle is the hope of a new tomorrow, shining for those seeking freedom from the wounds of this world. Tonight, we light the Christ candle. This candle radiates the hope of Jesus Christ to all who are willing to receive it. Holy Child of Bethlehem, you are the hope of our hurting and broken world. We thank you, O God, for guiding us through this season of Advent, shining your light in the midst of our darkness. As your birth lit up Bethlehem, the Bethlehem sky, continue to shine in our world by dispelling darkness, binding up the broken, and calling forth the faithful. On this holiest of nights, Make us willing to welcome you as our Savior and Lord. We pray this in the name of our newborn King. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 and 14 to 18. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day.
serenely beaming with flowing hearts is great. The second lesson is from the book Genesis, chapter 22, verse 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and I have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars in heaven and as the sand on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, by your offspring shall be all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that 
The third lesson is from Isaiah 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and for his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
The king is coming and will usher in a reign of justice for the poor and peace for all God's creation. The fourth lesson this evening is from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 5a. But you, O Bethlehem of Bethrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The fifth lesson is taken from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 35 and 38. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by this word, these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And verse 38, Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Sixth lesson from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered, and the first time registration would be taken while Quirinius, the governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city where to be registered with Mary 
whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. The seventh lesson is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger.
The eighth lesson for this evening is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The wise men follow a star to the child Jesus, the king of the Jews. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact, <clears throat> pardon me, the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and also pay homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. We have come a long way in our scriptural stories tonight from the very early instances of the great prophecies of the great prophets that a prince of peace would come to our earth and our home, into our hearts and into our minds, and bring us into a state of reconciliation with God and with one another. Throughout history and throughout time, the voices of the prophets have been clear to call us back to God, to call us to states of peace, and to call us to states of justice in the world. We remember on the night when Jesus was gathered with his friends in the upper room, he took bread, as we now take bread, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to those assembled, saying, Take this, all of you, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after they had supped, he took the cup of Elijah, And after he had given thanks, as we now give thanks, he gave it to those assembled, saying, Take this and drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. And now, great spirit, we ask that you come be upon us and upon these gifts, that both we and they might be symbols of your peace, your love, and your reign in this your world. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The great feast of God is now prepared for the children of God. We're going to allow the choir to come through first, and then we will serve the remaining members of the congregation. So, choir...
Our final lesson this evening comes from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. And I read from the first chapter, verses 1 down through verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all that might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world made, was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God, who were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the spirit, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, full of grace and truth. Here ends our lesson. And now may God bless you with every richness in the world. May you go forth in the world now to live with peace, justice, and love in your hearts. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you now and evermore. Amen. If you would please stand for the final hymn, Silent Night.